will join in singing our opening hymn, and you can just follow the words right up front. as we take counsel for the renewal and mission of this, your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us to perceive what is right, and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first order of business is to announce the appointment of our parliamentarian and parish ch chancellor, Duncan Blair. Thank you for being here, and our recorder, Scott Bretzman, and that requires an action of the annual meeting. I'm happy to hear a motion. So moved. Seconded. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Thank you. Janet Forsman, would you come forward, please? The most wonderful thing I can say about Janice Forgren is she finishes her time as the St. Paul's Parish Treasurer. It takes two people to replace her. <laughs> you are the right person at the right time for us, and you've done tremendous work. And we want you to have this token. I hope you put it somewhere where you see it often and know of our love and thanksgiving for all of your work. God bless you. stand up so we can see you. Uh, treasurer and assistant treasurer, the terms are for five years and they are ex officio members of the vestry. I'm happy to receive a motion that we accept them, please. Moved. Is it seconded? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Thank you both very much. At this point, it will become clear in just a moment. When Larry has accepted this position, he is also a vestry member, and so that will free up an extra seat and an unexpired term on the vestry, so we'll get to that in just a moment. On page 11, you will see the minutes from last year's meeting. They were put out in advance. They have been approved by the vestry. They need the action of the annual meeting. I'm happy to receive a motion. Moved. Is it seconded? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Um, let's see. 
like to call now on the retiring vestry members. If you would come forward, please. Uh, Lisa Eskew, Tara Pescato, Jim Call, Melody Kish, C.J. Reed, Anthony Marasco is completing an unexpired term and therefore is eligible for re-election today. And Larry Campbell, since you were elected, please come forward. Got this small token of our thanks, C.J. How many of these do you have now? I have a dozen. A dozen. <laughs> show our thanks for their hard work. does it every week at 7.30 a.m. on Wednesdays. They are a devoted group, and I thank them for their service, and you should too. Okay, now, uh, remaining vestry members, if you would just stand wherever you are, please. Uh, this is the class of 2020. Scott Bretzman, Jane Cole, Charlie Harris, Jeff Johnson, Jim Norman, Luke Strange. That's the class of 2020. Some of you are in the back. Class of 2021, Jennifer Adams, Ann Ayers, Clark Baven, Kathy Sachs, and Lisa Walsh. Let us give them a <laughs> And I'll call on our senior warden, Jim Cole, to remind us of this newly adopted election process that the annual meeting adopted in 2017, but it bears some renewal. So Jim, tell us about what we're doing today. Uh, thank you, Warren. Uh, as you may recall, uh, St. Paul's has a two-step uh, election process. Step one is the advisory ballot process. Step two is the live elections, which will occur today. So the advisory ballots, those are the ballots that were sent to your homes and had to be returned by Thursday. Uh, based upon those ballot results, the top three vote recipients um, will be recommended for uh, election by motion here at the annual meeting. Now, those three individuals also had to cross a percentage threshold of votes, it's a sliding scale, but the idea is to make sure that there is a, uh, a, level, a high level of support. Uh, that was a 55% threshold, and the three individuals whose names will be presented to you have each far exceeded uh, that threshold. Um, so, that is the advisory ballot process, and today we move on to the uh, live election. Uh, the first step will be, if you so choose, to accept the recommendation of those three individuals who would be voted in by uh, motion. Then the live voting will take place. It will occur here at the annual meeting. Uh, but under the changes we've made, that voting will continue through the day. So folks who are at 11 o'clock will be able to vote. Folks who are go to the 5 o'clock service this evening will be able to vote. So if there are family members who uh, weren't able to make it here, the polls are still open. <laughs> and, and, and we'll have folks there uh, after 11 and, and 5 o'clock. I just want to um, uh, note one thing. Uh, and we I think we should all feel very proud of the process that we have in place here. It really is a system that reaches out and ensures there's a high level of participation. When we reviewed this a couple of years ago, we talked to churches all across the country. There was only one other church that has this process. It's in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I'm convinced they got the idea from us <laughs> because we were doing this first. Um, and, and others wanted to know more about it and implement it themselves. So we should give ourselves a pat on the back for um, to be, be able to reach out as much as possible. So with that, those are the procedures. And yes, uh, we call on Lisa Eskew. I think you get the prize today, Lisa, for wearing more hats than anyone else. Uh, <laughs> is a retiring vestry member, retiring junior warden, and, and now in the capacity of the chair of the nominating committee. Would you please uh, give us your report? It is my pleasure to um, chair the nominating committee. Um, it begins on page 19 of the, uh, sorry, 15 of the annual report. All of the vestry candidates were listed there. Page 15. As Jim uh, just explained the two-step process, I'm going to um, ask that the nominees please stand with your name. Callie Fulton, Karen 
Green, Jay Hallen, Bruce Hedman, Catherine Kalwinski, Tim Locke, Andrew Lund, Anthony Morasco, Leslie Markham, Patricia Montague, Jim Morell. Can we pause right there and thank all these folks for standing? Lisa, if you'll give us the results of the advisory ballot. Um, the three candidates that received the percentage threshold and actually higher than the 55%, as Jim mentioned, are Tally Fulgham, Leslie Markham, and Jim Morell. Okay, we have the results of the advisory ballot, and it is advisory. It doesn't become actual until the annual meeting says so. I'm happy to receive a motion that we accept the results of the advisory ballot. It's moved. Is it seconded? Seconded. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, now, before we move on, if we could uh, take that off the stage for just a moment. Um, I have to ask for nominations from the floor. Are there any nominations as we go forward with the live election? If not, I ask that a motion have that the nominations be closed. Is it seconded? Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, thank you. All right, now, if we put the ballot up, Lisa, if you instruct us how to uh, vote at this point. All right, um, we are going to take your green sheet. Uh, you're gonna strike the three names, Tally Fulgham, Leslie Markham, and Jim Morrell. Just cross those off. Okay, Fulgham, Markham, Morrell come off, and you vote for four of the remaining eight. Once you've completed, if you'll raise your hand and the veteran members will come. Hold it, we'll come around together. most well-behaved annual meeting ever. This <laughs> I'm really nervous. One still needing time. The remaining ballot.
last call. Remember that the election is still open after the 11 o'clock service and after the 5 p.m. decision. Anything else, Lisa? Okay, I'd like to move on then with the Rector's Report. We have much to do uh, today and little time. A parish is 210 years old. I am the 14th Rector of this 210-year-old parish. I'm blessed to have passed my 19th anniversary in December. This is my 20th annual report to the annual meeting, and it has been quite a year. This was the year that we celebrated the 200th anniversary of the consecration of our beloved church, this beautiful and architecturally significant Enzim and Latrobe treasure. It's a great celebration for us. Over the past two decades, we as a parish have worked diligently to preserve, renovate, and maintain all of our properties, trying to be good stewards of the resources that are given to us, mindful that they always serve our mission to shine as a light in the world to the glory of God. Their purpose is to help us to make disciples. That's why we work so hard. That's why this is so important. These buildings are tools for ministry for us. Now, the majority of the annual report sticks to this same theme. This year, the focus is, and I know you can hardly contain yourself with excitement, <laughs> heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. <laughs> HVAC, HVAC. But before we get there, I have several other quick announcements I want to, to make. First, I want everyone to look to the back of the church and see the Reverend Elizabeth Reese, our new senior associate. She was raised up from this out of St. Paul's, uh, spent just back as our senior associate. This is her first annual meeting, so let's officially welcome her. track will know that Elisa's uh, curacy program ends in July of this year. I am pleased to announce that it officially ends today. This is our new assistant rector, Elisa. <laughs> Trinity Cathedral in Little Rock, Arkansas, in her home diocese. She returned to us as a deacon through med graduation in May. And she has been called to serve as the curate of St. Michael's Parish in Little Rock, Arkansas. So she is able to go back home, and she's very excited about that. And now I'd like for all of the staff who are present, part-time, full-time, parish associates, to just stand up so that we can get a look at you. <laughs> This one, I didn't want to go unnoticed. Anyone who is sitting on an aisle today, anyone who's sitting on an aisle, I want you to take your pew door and open it and close it. <laughs> have you noticed? Have you noticed? Pretty darn amazing, right? This is the work of two men of the parish, David Vander Elves and George Humdolt, both officers whose spouses want them out of the house. <laughs> They have done an amazing job for us, and I'm grateful to that, so I wanted you to notice that. And then one other thing I wanted to uh, take note of, and you might have seen this in a weekly epistle recently, the announcement, in a change our priest, our youngest children in the parish, Vestry recently has engaged uh, Dr. Amy Dyer to do a consultation for us, and the result of that consultation was that our current program, the Explorers program, is not currently viable in its, its current form, and so we've, uh, the Vestry has decided to start a new program called the St. Paul's Play School that will begin in September. So once you know of that shift, uh, program change from Explorers to the St. Paul's Preschool. And I wanted to announce that because Amy Dyer is here. Amy, please stand up so we can thank you for your excellent. <laughs> accepted my call to serve as the interim director of that new program until we find a new director. Thank you, Amy, for all you 
Okay, now it's on to the meat of the program, and this is about HVAC, and what we would love to do is take you all on a tour so you can see uh, all of the underbelly of the church. But rather than take you on a tour, we're going to take you on a virtual tour. So here we go. If we could hit the lights up there, please. We're waiting on the uh, technical problems that worked out. Um, Clark Raven, where are you? Stand up, please. Clark Raven is way in the back and video solutions. We, uh, even before you see these videos, I want you to thank Clark Raven for his great <laughs> Well, we're all happy and proud to be a part of such a beautiful sanctuary that's been a part of this community for over 200 years. We're not enjoying the way it can feel like it did 200 years ago so much, which is why we're going through a big HVAC renovation project. I now want to show you some parts of the church you've probably never seen before. So come on while I give you a tour. Welcome to the boiler room. That piece of equipment is responsible for keeping the church warm. Some days it does, some days it doesn't. If we were to try to put something like this in now, we would be required to have a full-time steam fitter. That's how old this is. We have on our campus about eight major systems with 16 major pieces of equipment that have been phased in and out over different time periods. We have piping that in some cases is 60 years old or older. So sometimes people ask us, well, can you just replace the boiler? That big piece of equipment down there and the answer is no, because if we just replace the boiler, we have all of these other pieces that we're going to show you in a minute that would contribute to the long-term health of what the, what the boiler does. So imagine how big this is and how much space is going to be down there when it's gone. Okay, we are now underneath the sanctuary. All of these pipes are going to be pulled out in the HVAC room to extend the length of the sanctuary. We currently spend roughly fifty to fifty-four thousand dollars a year maintaining the system. That is all going to go away when we have our new HVAC system in place. All right, this is a room you're definitely familiar with. How often have you opened up a cabinet looking for a glass or salt or pepper, and you have found ductwork? Yes, believe it or not, there's a major piece of ductwork coming in here to the kitchen and we've got a big return on the other side of this wall. So when we realized we we're gonna have to take all of that out to do this project, we wanted to give careful consideration to how we were gonna put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And we came up with five main concepts. Safety, preservation, efficiency, comfort, and sustainability. These were really the guiding principles that helped us make some great decisions. Let me give you an example. If you've ever been here for Shrove Tuesday, which is coming up this week, and you know we bake a lot of bacon and we make pancakes, well, the smell lingers on the next day at Ash Wednesday services, primarily because we can't open these windows and we don't have very good ventilation in here. So that was a perfect example of something that we probably wouldn't have done on our own, but this project gave us a really great opportunity to fix some things that had been long-standing issues, shall we say. I've got a couple of examples to show you. Follow me. 
this is where we store the altar linens and where the acolytes get ready for services. What you might not know is that behind this big contraption is a heating unit that runs the entire length of this room into the vestry room next door. And behind this wall right here is a window we would love to open up so we can shine as a light on the world in this room. And we have another challenge in another room. Follow me. So this room is probably familiar to you. This is the Percy Foster Hall room. And if you're ever here in the wintertime, you'll know it's about 80 degrees in this room. So when we think about this five tenants, comfort is the one that comes to mind in here. We have baseboard heating all along the bottom of this room and into these two workspaces. In addition, we've got this ductwork that needs to be pulled out. And while we're doing all that, we love the opportunity to, you guessed it, just like in the other room, the window. Back here, we would love to be able to show off again. So we've been very careful in considering making these changes while we're doing the HVAC work. Now, I'm gonna take you to a place that I'm sure most of you have never seen. Follow me. Here we are on the roof of St. Paul's Church. We've got Norton Hall right here, the sanctuary here, and here are the HVAC units. These will be removed and replaced in this project. So as you can imagine, now that you've seen our HVAC challenges uh, from the bottom of our church to the top, it requires a lot of technical expertise and skill and a lot of planning. And to that end, on behalf of the vestry, on behalf of the HVAC committee and the St. Paul's Foundation, we appreciate your time and your interest and your support. Thank you. Jim Morrell forward to give us a few uh, updates on their work. Thank you, Warren. Um, so, uh, main thing uh, just to update folks is that this committee has been working for more than two years on this process, um, and Sue Setliff has been chairing this project. Sue successfully oversaw our playground renovation. Um, has really been the rock of this entire project. So uh, if you see Sue, thank Sue uh, for the hours and weeks and months that she has put into this and is putting into this. Um, the other members of the committee are uh, Lisa Eskew, Jim Call, and Ann Ayers, who've been representing the vestry. And then we've been very lucky, we've had uh, Sarah Knutson, Ruffin Tyler, and Matt Hollerback, uh, who all have decades of experience in building and HVAC systems um, and have been advising, recommending, questioning vendors all along the way. So it's, uh, it's a team of experts uh, plus me. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, just to uh, move uh, next slide, um, over the past two years, uh, we have picked the following uh, partners on this project, Design Tech Engineering. Uh, they are designing the new system. They uh, most recently worked with Christ Church on their HVAC renovation. Um, they have a lot of experience in sort of balancing the needs of modern systems and historic buildings. Uh, and they've been a great partner. Kearns Group, uh, who we worked with on the church facade project, as well as the reconstruction of Wilmer Hall. And then uh, Harry Braswell Incorporated, who's previously worked on those projects, as well as uh, the renovation of the rectory. So why so many partners? Uh, because, as we just saw in that incredible video, our central system for Norton and the sanctuary is housed in the basement of Norton. Pipes go throughout the walls and through the cabinets, uh, so Norton's going to have to be closed off to get the old equipment out and the new equipment in. Uh, so project timing, uh, the construction is slated to begin early this summer and is expected to last six to eight months. Uh, Norton Hall is going to be closed off entirely, uh, available to worship services, weddings, and funerals. Uh, the next slide, uh, impact on Norton, uh, because as we saw, this includes all the pipes and vents, many of the walls will have to be uh, torn up. Uh, this allows for some modest changes to Norton uh, that will help us better utilize the space, open up some windows, uh, it'll include a larger vesting room for acolytes, a uh, new area for clergy vesting, and improvements to the kitchen as well. Uh, so that is what is being done, uh, and that leaves the question of the total cost of this project. Uh, I would ask you all to sit down for this next slide, but you're already <laughs> seated. Um, but the total cost is uh, $3 million. That's the, the big number, uh, but fortunately, uh, there's already been some important steps taken. Harry Campbell's gonna be talking about that next. Uh, so just uh, in conclusion, um, 
As we've seen, this project is overdue, long overdue. Uh, it's a credit to the leaders and volunteers of this church that it has been kept up and running as long as it has. Uh, in the long run, this is actually going to save us money. As Lisa said, we're spending tens of thousands of dollars annually just to keep this system up, uh, and it will allow us to be better stewards of our spaces. So, thank you, Jim. I think to the strength of this parish, uh, you'll notice that both Hearn and Brazel were involved in previous projects. I discovered that uh, Jim Call and I were actually on the vestry in 2006 when the $6.4 million Wilmer renovation project was done. Uh, and so what we have proposed here, we have a slide here really highlighting the key details, is of the $3 million project, uh, given cash on hand, money that's been set aside by the St. Paul's Foundation, but also significantly money remaining from the Third Century campaign, is that we currently, in order to start this project uh, this year, in roughly June, we need a line of credit of 1.7 million, and that would, is currently being discussed with Burke and Herbert, and then there would be uh, the, an ongoing campaign, which Warren is gonna speak to shortly. It's actually, at this point, um, our full confidence and expectation that we will not have any residual debt at the end of this project, at the end of the line of credit term. So at the end of next year, uh, we would hope to be able to raise all the remaining amount, unlike the 2006 project, which did have a long-term debt as part of it. But in the worst case scenario, if we did have a maximum amount, we projected the maximum amount of long-term debt, if no additional contributions are made, would be 1.2 million. And again, this is where the strength of this parish comes out because given the St. Paul's Foundation and the role it paid, played in debt service on the Wilmer project, um, the foundation has more than sufficient capacity to support all of the debt service in the unexpected scenario that we might need a long-term debt of 1.2 million. So again, we need 1.7 million for the construction process because there are funds still to be received this year and additional uh, campaign contributions to the HVAC process, which Warren's gonna speak to. Um, but we are anticipating in a prudent and competent manner that we'll be able to retire all of this debt, the construction line of credit uh, at the end of the process. And uh, again, in the unexpected scenario that we need long-term financing, uh, we have the strength of the foundation to support that uh, without impacting any of our ministry, worship, or outreach activities. Well, thank you. Let's uh, let's go look at some numbers. Are we ready? I want the record to show that the rector is actually giving this report. This is a, I'm not a numbers guy, but here we go. <laughs> and playing goal, $3 million. What do we have on hand? We have $1.8 million. And where did that come from? from the Third Century Fund, the St. Paul's Foundation Sinking Fund, and Gibson pledges in the quiet phase of the campaign that we are currently started. So where are we? We have left to raise $1.2 million, but there's more. Here's the best part. <laughs> With the generosity of an anonymous donor, St. Paul's has received a matching gift of up to $800,000. This donor will match gifts two for one, tripling each gift. So that means if you give $1,000, they give $2,000, St. Paul's gets $3,000. So what we really need to raise is, what's left to raise, $400,000. So that's certainly within our reach, I think. All right, so that's where we are. Um, I want to go right to the next video, if we could, and then I'll call on the senior, <laughs> senior warden to um, walk us through the next phase. I hope by now you know the five tenets of St. Paul's and committed them to your heart. 
We are a parish that prays, worships, serves, learns, and gives. These are the ways that we worship God and serve our community. But do you know about the sixth tenet of St. Paul's? Be cool. <laughs> so many things around St. Paul's highlight this often forgotten tenet. The legacy of over 200 years worshiping in this sacred space, cool. Our newly renovated courtyard, cool. Our beautifully restored stained glass windows, cool. Magnets on our centuries old pews, cool. Our amazing staff and clergy, cool. Lives transformed by programs and ministries at St. Paul's, cool. Our millennial priests make scones for staff meetings and makes pour over coffee. Cool. Our music director wears earphones all day long. Cool. Our ushers have TV shows. Pretty cool. Our priests wear Britney Spears microphones. Cool. And most importantly, our parishioners steadfastly support our mission to shine as a light in the world to the glory of God. Cool. cool. This, my friends, is not cool. Our outdated HVAC system does not help keep St. Paul's cool in the summer or warm in the winter. Some parts of the system are over 60 years old. Not cool. The system is overly complex and costly to maintain. Not cool. The system struggles to keep Norton Hall and the sanctuary warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Not cool. This summer, we're embarking on a bold move to keep St. Paul's cool. We're renovating our outdated HVAC systems in Norton Hall and in the church. Please help us keep St. Paul's cool and support our HVAC ASAP capital campaign. Say yes to the pledge, y'all. It can get hot in here. <laughs> It's even better. Pledge today and you can triple your support for St. Paul's. For every dollar pledged, St. Paul's has an anonymous donor who will give $2 up to $800,000. For example, if you pledge $1,000, our donor gives $2,000 and St. Paul's gets $3,000. You triple the impact. This amazing opportunity means once we raise 400,000 additional dollars, our donor gives us $800,000, and we have the $1.2 million we need to fully finance the HVAC restoration. Now that's pretty much as cool as it gets. presented by our senior warden, Jim Caldwell. So in your annual report, um, hand that actually, is a copy of the resolution. Um, this is a resolution that was adopted by the vestry. Um, as Larry mentioned, it, it calls for $1.7 million in construction financing, and then up to $1.2 million in, uh, in long-term debt if necessary. We can't do that alone. We need everybody's help here. In order to move forward with, with debt financing, we need congregational approval um, to do so. I've seen the videos, you've heard the case, that the need here is, is very real. A lot of work has gone into it. I think we can all remember being um, cold here in the winter and warm in the summer and the temporary AC units that we had in here. Um, we, the, the need is real and this is really a generational investment uh, that we can make that will be paying dividends for decades to come. Um, we ask for your support for the resolution. We've been here before with debt financing. We're in a much better situation. This doesn't look like it'll be long-term debt. Um, we're well on the way, and we ask your support uh, for the resolution. 
just in brief, uh, we need an annual meetings um, approval to empower the vestry to negotiate the terms with Birkenberg Bank and our trustees to execute the documents. So that's what you're voting for. Have to receive a motion. Moved is a second. Any conversation? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Yourself a hand. to page 21, we'll have a brief uh, treasurer's report from Janet, and note that there is no action required of this because the budget is approved by the vestry, not the annual meeting. Janet. I'm pleased to report on St. Paul's financial performance for 2018 and on the operating budget for 2019. St. Paul's had another successful financial year in 2018. Not only did the operating fund end the year in balance, there also were funds available to to the operating reserve. Again in 2018, pledgers gave more than the amount pledged, and our largest expense categories were personnel and operations and maintenance, with, you can guess it, HVAC repairs uh, being a major expense. Moving on to 2019, the proposed budget shown on page 21 has now been approved by the vestry. The first thing you'll notice the 2019 budget is $90,000 below 2018 actual. Transition from the Explorers program to the new Play School program. At the time the 2019 budget was finalized, the revenue and expenses for the new Play School were still being developed and therefore were not included in the 2019 budget. So at this point, the 2019 budget only includes Explorers revenue and expenses for the spring semester and for summer camp. Once the Play School budget has been finalized, the vestry will approve an updated 2019 budget to include the Play School revenue and expense. Other highlights for um, 2019 budget. On the income side, 2019 current year pledges are almost exactly the same as they were in the 2018 budget. The fact that the 2019 total pledge income is less than 2018 actual simply reflects that in 2018 pledgers gave more than what the new pledge. Other income includes a $42,000 transfer from the operating reserve for a number of one-time maintenance projects as well as outreach designated gifts such as pennies from heaven that support our outreach efforts. On the expense side, Personnel and operations and maintenance continue to be the largest expenses. Personnel number one time projects, Norton roof repair being the largest one, while the expected cost of HVAC repairs, thankfully, is greatly reduced. The 2019 budget continues to allocate an amount equal to 10% of pledges for outreach and 10% for work within the church, which largely goes to the diocese. You see the individual balances of St. Paul's many special funds. These funds are separate from those generated and consumed by annual operations. Among other things, they serve as a buffer during the summer and at other points when cash flow tightens. In 2018, we were blessed with the Tyser gift and a second Tackett estate gift in support of St. Paul's operations. Those gifts, along with the positive 2018 operating results, increased the balance in the operating reserve to $142,000. That's the treasurer's report for 2018. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve as the treasurer for St. Paul's. It's been an honor and a privilege. If you have any questions about the 2018 financials and the 2019 budget, just catch me after the meeting. God, the King of all the saints, we praise and glorify your holy name for all your servants in our parish who have finished their course in your faith and fear. Ray Alton Al Boyer, John Michael Andre, William Douglas Bozek, Samuel Brown Adams, Matthew Burns Wade, David Charles Rohrenbeck, Margaret Williams, Nancy Ann Matterburton, 
And we pray that encouraged by their examples, aided by their prayers, and strengthened by their fellowship, we also may be become partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 We are adjourned.